thank you very much just staying here with us on this theme of the blue economy at European Development Days. Now, I have with me, joining me, very pleased to welcome Catherine Sack, who is the CEO of Ocean Unite and the co-chair of the Ocean Risk and Resilience Action Alliance, or ORA, am I pronouncing that correct? It's lovely to see you, Karen. I have a few questions for you. I want you to tell us, of course, we only have 10 minutes, but tell us a little bit about the ORA exor organization, why it's worked so important, why, why the, what is the, uh, the whole raison d'etre of the alliance? Well, thank you so much for inviting me to join you today. Um, it's a pleasure to be uh, with you in Brussels, even though I'm across at least one ocean. So the Ocean Risk and Resilience Action Alliance is unique. Uh, it is really the only cross-sector collaboration that is focused on convening action and capital to secure positive outcomes for the ocean and the communities that depend on it. On it. Uh, we bring together governments, the finance and insurance sector, uh, environmental organizations and stakeholders from the global south. And our focus is on developing and scaling innovative finance and insurance products that can incentivize investment into nature and provide returns for investors. So our goal is to drive $500 million of investment into marine and coastal nature-based solutions by 2030. And yes, and to surface at, at least 15 novel finance products by 2025. So we are collaborating closely with uh, delivery partners on the ground who are working with the communities that they serve to develop products that are fit for purpose and to engage them. And then we bring uh, in partners to help pilot, replicate, and scale those. So really our vision is to catalyze action to combat ocean risk effectively. Um, and to do that, we need to value the ocean so that it isn't seen as uh, what we would call an unaccounted for externality, but as a critical asset. Bringing the best brains in the business around the table, deploying their expertise uh, through our members and partners to accelerate investment. And uh, as we heard from the panel before, this is really important because biodiversity loss and climate change and pollution mean that ocean ecosystems are facing collapse. This is not a problem for 30 years time, it's a problem for today. Um, and so we've got to improve ocean health adaptation and resilience. And most importantly, the social and economic resilience of communities most uh, dependent on thriving marine ecosystems. And, and just a few facts that I think will be useful for folks to understand what this means. Um, in coastal ecosystems, uh, for example, a healthy reef can reduce incoming wave energy by up to 97% and reduce the annual expected damages from storms uh, by more than $4 billion. Mangrove forests can uh, capture and sequester five to 10 times more carbon than terrestrial forests and provide more than $80 billion a year in avoided costs from coastal flooding. So the UN estimates that investing just $6 billion a year in nature-based disaster risk management measures, like restoring these coastal ecosystems, would save the world $360 billion over the next 15 years. So our focus is really on driving investment into the space um, so that we can begin to build resilience uh, and transform uh, the space, uh, which again, the UN has called for. They've called for a transformative response by the finance and insurance industries so that we can reduce the exposure and vulnerability of coastal communities and ecosystems through the global mobilization of private capital and risk reduction expertise. Thanks, Karen. I'm, I'm quite stunned by, by some of those figures you're, you're throwing there. I mean, I have to say, I thought mangrove forests were just pretty. I didn't realize what an incredible resource they were. So let me also ask you then, what sort of projects are you looking at with the Alliance moving forward? And what are the next steps? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the work that we do has three priority pathways. The first uh, is focused on financial innovation. So how can we work with partners to develop 
and deliver the groundbreaking projects and products that build a new marketplace of investment into coastal natural capital and resilience. And that includes everything from you know, developing sovereign and private coastal resilience bonds, insurance products for coral reefs and mangroves, uh, microfinance for uh, small scale fishers like saving clubs and uh, financial literacy, and even kind of developing uh, AI driven platforms that can inform insurers of their potential risk of exposure from insuring illegal fishing vessels. So it, it runs the gamut, uh, but this is how we can activate and motivate um, uh, the finance sector to innovate and drive change. The second pathway that we are focused on is really science and research, because through this research, we can build the financial literacy of all stakeholders so that we can understand and then better predict, model, and manage ocean risk. Um, at the moment, we're working with uh, uh, the insurer AXA and the University of California, Santa Barbara, to develop a coastal risk index, which they will be releasing at the end of the year. That will identify the potential risk from sea level rise and ecosystem degradation in coastal areas uh, for both the private and public sector. And we're also working with the Stockholm Resilience Center uh, um, to pull together some synthesis reports, which will be the first time that reports have been developed to look at the impacts of ocean risk on small-scale fishers, coastal communities, and women and girls, and on this blue acceleration, this, uh, this new investment into the blue economy and what that could mean. And that's all thanks to the support of the government of Canada, uh, which has underwritten uh, the development of uh, a, a whole lot of these projects. Finally, we focus on policy and governance. So both with the public and the private sector so that we can help foster the ocean and climate policy nexus and drive commitments and investment into the space. Um, one example is a paper we worked on with the high-level panel for a, a, a blue economy uh, called Financing a Sustainable Ocean Economy that was recently published in Nature Communications. We work with the UN Environment Programs, uh, Financial Initiative, the Insurance Development Forum, the IUCN, and the Paris Peace Forum and others to really try and drive engagement in the space. Um, and we're excited about some developments moving forward, which we hope will grow this even further. Well, thank you very much, Karen. I know we haven't had a lot of time with you, but I think I'm sure people will be really interested to find out more. So they please do go online, follow the hashtag EDD21. And Karen, I'm sure you'll be able to share with them the, uh, the details of the website and so on for people to find out more. And of course, keep up the great work. We're absolutely delighted that you're doing that. As you mentioned, that Canada is heavily involved in this, and that's what we've got coming up next in our second lab debate of this morning. So don't go away.